Well, then I said, that gherkin won't do, sir. So, of course, I went straight to jail. Luckily, I am on the jail, so... <laughs> so I hear some weird rumblings about Google got smacked to the curb by some court case which has decreed it's a monopoly. And I wonder if this is just for show, if there's actually going to be any repercussions and changes to the way our collective experience of the internet is dominated by Google. So what's the deal here? Well, this article on Wired by Paresh Dave. Is his last name Dave? It's a very strange last name. A US judge ruled that Google is an illegal monopolist. Here's what might come next. Judge Amit Mehta's ruling has triggered a potentially years-long process to decide how to punish the company. For users, it could mean a future in which Google isn't front and center everywhere. Oh, well, good, really. Not that I want Google to go away, but competition is healthy. Unbox a new phone in the US and it's almost certain to have Google as a default way to search the web. Federal Judge Amit Mehta on Monday ruled in favor of the US Department of Justice that the contracts Google uses to secure that position violate fair competition laws. Now, Mehta must decide what to do about it. I presume I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Mehta, probably. The jurist could order big changes to the unboxing experience, with users having to select their default search provider. He also could go as far as to force Google to sell parts of its business. Meta scheduled a hearing for September to begin the process of deciding the penalties, but with Google appealing the verdict, it could be years, if ever, before the search giant must comply. Though legal and economics experts say it's difficult to guess where Meta might land with his remedies. They have some ideas of what he might be considering. Here's a look at five points. Ban revenue sharing. US courts have generally tried to resolve antitrust violations by ordering an end to the illegal behavior, setting rules to prevent it from recurring, and taking any additional measures needed to ensure that the culprit and its competitors are moved onto an even field. To satisfy this first prong, Meta is widely expected to ban Google from continuing with arrangements under which it splits tens of billions of dollars in ad revenue among Apple, Samsung, Mozilla, and other companies and agree to set Google as a default search on their devices or software. At a minimum, the Justice Department will ask for an injunction that forbids Google from engaging in the conduct that the court deemed to be improper, says William Kovacic who previously served as an antitrust regulator on the U.S. Federal Trade Commission. An injunction might prevent Google from using its unmatched economic might to outspend smaller search companies such as Bing, DuckDuckGo, or whatever the hell of that is. Let's go check them out. To secure exclusive default status, positioning matters. Meta's ruling found that even when it's easy for users to switch defaults, most people don't adjust the setting but some do prefer Google. That's why Google.com is the most popular search term on Bing, which is the default on some Microsoft devices, according to Meta's ruling. In the future, users who prefer Google may end up having to query Google.com in other search engines too. So I like the Brave Search, but Brave Search doesn't do very good images. DuckDuckGo does pretty good images, and Google's is by far the best. Require choice screens. Meta could follow the lead of the European Union, which for years has required Google to offer a menu of search options on Android devices, and recently expanded the rule to the Chrome browser. Experts don't believe the European regulation has led to a significant increase in the popularity of Google alternatives because users recognize Google better than other options. The horse is already out of the barn, says Herbert Hovenkamp, an antitrust scholar at Penn Law School who has researched tech platforms. One problem with free choice is that it won't necessarily take down Google's market share. But if Meta pursues the approach, he should make some improvements to the EU's rules, says Camille Baz, senior vice president of public affairs at DuckDuckGo. Users should be prompted with a choice screen periodically. Not just once, Bazbaz says. 
They shouldn't have to deal with pop-ups from Google urging them to switch the default to Google, he adds. When users first interact with a competing search app, there should be an easy way to set it as the default app. With these added measures, some searchers could find themselves more reliably ditching Google. Others could be frustrated by the recurring requests. Order a uh, divestiture. Contract, bans, and choice screens are examples of conduct remedies. But the Justice Department in recent years has expressed a preference for what are known as structural remedies, or breaking off parts of a company. Most famous is the breakup of telephone giant Bell in the 1980s, creating a variety of independent companies, including AT&T. But courts aren't always on board. When Microsoft lost an antitrust battle in the 1990s, a federal appeals court rejected an order to break up the company, and Microsoft eventually settled on a range of conduct changes. A one-time sale is preferred by regulators in part because it doesn't require them to invest in monitoring the ongoing compliance of companies in terms of conduct remedies. It's a much cleaner break, and some antitrust experts contend that structural remedies are more effective. The challenge is figuring out what parts of a company need to be separated. John Quoka, an economics professor at Northeastern University who recently served as an advisor to FTC Chair Lena Khan, says the key is identifying businesses in which ownership by Google are distorting its incentives. He says that, for instance, breaking off search could open the door to Google's Android partnering with a different search engine. It's kind of curious, really. It's strange that Google's search engine is it's the origin of their, their enterprise, isn't it? Breaking the uh, foundation of the company away from the rest of the company is a bit odd. Although, to be honest, it's Alphabet now, isn't it? It's not Google as such. Some financial analysts who study Google parent Alphabet are also sceptical. Alphabet's scale, continued strong execution and financial strength mitigate its legal risk and the possible ensuing financial and business model ramifications, Emil L. Nems, vice president for Moody's Rating, said in a press statement. Other legal experts envision a future in which search results would come from Google and the ads in the experience from another company that spun off from Google. It's unclear how that remedy would affect users, but it's possible ads could end up being less relevant and more intrusive. Well, I like my ads to be irrelevant. <laughs> I don't like seeing ads for stuff that I casually discussed in private suddenly appearing around me. <laughs> I think we've all experienced that. They like to say that we're not being listened to, but we are. I mean, come on. I did a stream on unschooling, and I mentioned Montessori schools as something similar to these unschooling schools. And then I started seeing ads popping up for Montessori schools. I've never searched for it. I just mentioned it on a stream once. So something's listening to me and all of us. Force Google to share. Don't be so greedy, Google. Meta found in his judgment that Google provides users a superior experience because it receives billions of more queries than any other search engine, and that data fuels improvements to the algorithms that decide which results to show for a particular query. Rebecca Hall Allensworth, a law professor at Vanderbilt University following the Google case, says one of the most aggressive remedies would be requiring Google to share data or algorithms with its search competition so they too could improve. Courts do not like to force sharing between rivals like that, but on the other hand, the judge seemed very concerned about how Google's conduct has deprived its rivals of what they really need to compete. Scale in search data. She says, forcing data sharing would directly address that concern. Potential shareable data could include all the queries that users are running on Google and which results they are clicking. DuckDuckGo's Baz Baz says, another option would have Google hold on to its data while instead providing a service on a non-discriminatory basis. With adequate customer support for other apps to pull results from Google and present them to users as part of a compelling experience. Rivals have called Google's existing offering in this regard inadequate. Okay, bitchy there. Only a multi-pronged remedy will allow rivals to enter the market and fairly compete for consumers based on the merits of their own product, says Lee Hepner, senior counsel at the American Economic Liberties Project, an anti-monopoly advocacy group. 
Any approach that includes Google sharing data is likely to raise questions about its users' privacy. Strength and rivals would also have a better shot at securing defaults, meaning those who'd rather use Google will again have to take a few more steps to get back to regular old Google. Increase oversight. It's up to the Justice Department to propose to Meta's potential remedies, which Google would then get a chance to rebut. Neither side has previewed what it wants. In some other antitrust battles, Google has found ways to design product and policy changes to continue to limit competition, in part by making competition unaffordable for rivals. Google will do anything it can to get in the way of progress, Baz Baz says. That's why he hopes Meta establishes a monitoring body to administer the remedies and hold Google to their spirit. Baz Baz also wants to see Google have to invest in public education initiatives to let users know about the benefits they can get from switching search engines. That's a bit shitty, though. You're forcing them to advertise competitors. That's a bit weird. With oversight and PR measures in place, users may have no choice but to hear about the Google search antitrust case for a long time to come. Right. Well, they're clearly very large, and clearly they have a monopoly and they don't want to give it up. What do we get here? Cozier. A green search engine sees danger and opportunity in the generative AI revolution. Ah. A Berlin-based Ecosia carved out a niche as a carbon-negative search engine to adapt to the ChatGPT era. It's moving closer to Google and exploring how AI could help users cut carbon emissions. What? Really? Maybe it's a good thing. This article written by Peter Guest. Let's have a little look, shall we? Because, unfortunately, when it comes to search engines, Having a monopoly is going to give you an edge, isn't it? It's going to make your content more relevant. And more relevant content is going to enable more effective searching. They're in the best position to, I would have thought, train their AIs on their own content. Although, to be honest, Google Gemini is the worst of all the chatbots that I've been trying out. Anyway, what is this article about? In the era of search wars fought between giants, it's tough to be small. Berlin-based Ecosia offers a search engine for the climate conscious, promising to be carbon negative by investing all of its profits into planting trees, more than 180 million of them since it launched in 2009. That's not a bad idea. I don't understand why all of these eco people are dead set on these giant industrial carbon hoovering plants. It doesn't really make sense compared to just planting trees. It's not likely to topple Google, but it has won a stable clientele of around 20 million users with that green branding and repackaging search results from Microsoft's Bing. But after a decade of little change in the search business, everything is now in flux, thanks to generative AI. I've never seen so much change in the market as in the last six months, says Kristen Kroll, Ecosia's CEO. The tumult has forced Ecosia to rethink its business plan in order to compete with new chatbot-like search engines built on large language models. Today, the company began switching from providing results exclusively from Microsoft's Bing, as it has for the past 14 years, to primarily sourcing them from Google, though it will still syndicate some Bing results via marketing company System 1. At the beginning of the year, Kroll says Ecosia got some signals from Microsoft that kind of triggered us to be a bit more on the lookout for other potential providers. In March, Microsoft hiked its prices from search results, which was a wake-up call for alternative search engines. According to Kroll, Microsoft declined to comment. Well, they're not really a search engine if they're sourcing all of their results from another search engine. They're, it seems more like they're a skin on top of a search engine. So how are they a competitor to Google if they're basically just a skin wrapped around Google? Ecosia switched partners in hopes of finding a way to participate in the profound shift in how people search the internet triggered by AR. The company is only testing its partnership with Google and isn't immediately going to be using the search giant's AI tools, though it hopes to do so in the future. Right. Well, I'm going to leave that because it's a bit boring, really. Well, to be honest, I think if you're going to try and shackle Google, they'll just find ways of redirecting their profits elsewhere and, and continue their monopoly in other realms. This is just about Google search. So we're talking down here about ban revenue sharing. Okay, so they're doing deals with these other large companies to force their products front and center. So ban that, all right, yeah. Choice screens, 
Okay, yes. Um, perhaps all search engines should have this feature. This should not be just something that is forced upon Google. Perhaps this is something that should be made for all search engines. So you're on Google, but on Google you have a choice of seeing the results from Brave or Bing or whatever. And that wouldn't be a bad idea to uh, allow people to have more kind of amalgamated uh, search experiences. So why wouldn't you want a, a search engine that, that could pull results in from somewhere else? Other than that Ecosia, who was basically just a wrapper around search engines, and a lot of them do it, I suppose. But choice screens, yeah, maybe. Uh, but Google is, is a good search engine. People are going to go for Google. So break it apart, forcing Google to share. I don't know how you can do that. Well, we'll see, I suppose. Maybe this is just talk to give people the flavour that something is, is going on. But I'm not convinced. I think Alphabet's so wealthy that they could buy themselves extra time or other dimensions of arguments to keep their monopoly going in this realm. And also AI is going to transform the search world. I think OpenAI is building a search engine as well, aren't they? And am I hearing it right that XAI was doing something as well, similar? So I think a lot of these AI companies are going to become search engines. So the way Google is, or was, is becoming kind of dated. So perhaps that's why this is happening now, because they're transforming into a different kind of delivery structure that is more AI driven. So they don't really care so much about their search engine, so they're just going to shed it, maybe. Pigwig, out! <laughs> Mm-hmm.